We are live from Southampton, Long Island, New York. This is the Suffolk A semifinal game between Bayport Blue Point and Southampton. Hi again, everybody. Dan Savory and Josh Drebsky. John Perez, thanks so much for joining us on this Tuesday evening for some Suffolk County basketball. The winner will play either Harpers Field or Wine Dance. That game is currently in action, which, of course, you can watch live on News 12 Varsity. And they will meet this upcoming Friday for the championship. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the two teams. The Phantoms coached by Charlie Peck in the second year at the helm. Darby, who's their leading scorer at point guard. Reef Stahl, Walker, Lawrence, and Dowdy. Round out the five. For Southampton, Herm Lamison, starting in 1991, an alumnus of this school. His starting lineup, Wingfield, Pike, who is their leading scorer, coming off of a 25-point outing against Glenn. Alejo, Krasuski, and Snowden. Wearing the white uniforms, tops and bottoms, will be the home team. From left to right is BBP. We bring it down to center court, and we're underway. Thanks so much for joining us on News 12 Varsity. Moving up the near side of the court, here is Restall. Far side, and stopping and popping for a baseline jumper, nothing but net. Mike Darby, no surprise there, an all-county guy, the third straight year that BBP has had an all-county candidate in Suffolk. And Darby is one of the top scorers in the entire land. 25 points per contest. We're going to talk things over here on the call. It should end up going Bayport's way, and that will end up being the correct call from left to right. First year in Suffolk A in a long time for Southampton, a group that has won the last three Long Island championships and, of course, Suffolk County championships in the B. Prestigious program which really has continued to grow more and more. Meanwhile, just two years removed from their title is BBP. Coming up short rim was Darby. They've done a pretty good job containing him in the past, but still he puts up some big numbers. Here's a short corner jumper that misses an air ball from Snowden, whose high this season of 28 points came in the first meeting between the two teams. In that first meeting, 72-68 up at Bayport. One of those close battles in the second one. Yes, the score may have been a little bit bigger, 75-64, but still that was uh, some garbage time points if you want to count their fouls here and there. They know they gave him some of their best games. Here's a three-pointer, and the triple will come up short from Riefenstahl. Riefenstahl was on the team a couple of years ago. So was Darby. Riefenstahl's brother, George, a 6'9 forward playing for Farmingdale State. And Darby's older brother, Tim, who was on that championship team and did start on that group with Darby coming off the bench, the younger one, and Mike. He attends Stony Brook, a very bright individual, as is Mike Darby as well. Good start already, even though it's just a 2-0 score. Krasuski, the 6'4 senior, will inbound. Wingfield cross midcourt to the near wing. They float inside, Snowden, hard post move, knocked out of bounds. Well, this is a home game for Southampton, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't feel like it right now. Bayport Blue Point, the Phantom fans really traveled well, including the student section in that top right corner. Darby to Lawrence. Wing to wing down to the near corner. Nice pump fake, driving the baseline. Trying to use the glass was Zach Walker. In transition, here comes a three from Pike. Back iron pops high in the air, good rebound. Krasuski. Fighting for the loose ball, they're gonna say jump ball. Possession arrow will stay in the favor of Southampton. Pretty cold start thus far for Southampton, missing their first few shot attempts and turnovers as well. Krasuski will come and inbound the basketball to the left. They find Alejo, the pump fake. And will miss from the mid block. The rebound by Darby. 
Six foot two, has muscle, can also dish it. A high three pointer that misses from Riefenstahl. Crossover move in the middle, Krasuski. To Alejo to go wing to wing, wide open. Wingfield dials up the three. That will miss, hit the top rope. And it will go to the visitors. Still just a 2 0 score. Coming in on two and a half minutes into this game. Mike Darby being recruited by RIT, Geneseo, Stevens Tech, trying to study biochemical engineering in the future. Goes sharp, really hard to the cup, but finishing on that rebound, and the two is going to be Ryan Lawrence for a 4 0 lead. Wingfield to Aleo, the pump fake. Krasuski, he misses on the three point attempt, and ice cold is Southampton. To the baseline, they field a double team, floated out to Darby. NBA range three rattles out. Snowden towards the baseline. They'll get the ball, though. Yeah, this group had a move to A this year and also playing in League Six, which is what both of these teams are in. Maybe the toughest league in all of Suffolk County, and that's what Herm Lamison was saying to me. Five different groups made the postseason this year more than any other league. Three-pointer, rattles out. Alejo with another miss. Darby, jump pass. Here's Zach Walker. And they're going to give him the foul. They'll say in the act of shooting. Walker, 14 points per game. Dropped 21 in their win over Amityville. That was the last time out. The game before then was against Windant, which was a really good test to get ready for Amityville. Another physical man-to-man -man team. They were able to beat Windant, who again is playing right now against Harborfield, but good tune-up they felt for Amityville getting into that. Darby kind of took over, and then another 21 points from that guy. Zach Walker goes one for two from the stripe. The 5 nothing advantage halfway through the opening quarter. Alejo, hard pass inside, Snowden, and one. Well, he's got the size at six foot four. And he has had some pretty good success against BBP this season. We mentioned the season high, 28 points and 18 rebounds in that first meeting. The second one, he had another 14 and 15. A sophomore that just continues to grow. Rookie of the year last year, all league, all conference, real pleasant surprise, and has adjusted to year number two. Misses the end one opportunity, but Aleo follows it up. And just like that, it's a one point game. Three-pointer on the way. No good from Zach Walker. Coast to coast. And the ball will stay with Southampton. A good defense stopping Snowden. We'll have our first sub as well. Bonero will come off as Riefenstahl, who did start the game, returns to the floor. Offensive foul. Darby with this zone, and with his size, again, he's so good at going straight to the basket. They've done a good job of containing him because of that zone D that they play. Another three-pointer will miss. Now a transition, Alejo bounces it back to Krasuski, but a travel. The keys for this game, according to Charlie Peck, was trying to stop Pike and Fuller. Pike being the main guy that he wanted to stop. <laughs> 
Wingfield straight to the rack, and he finishes first lead of the game for Southampton. They've lost only twice this year by a combined eight points. Meanwhile, a quick response by BBP gives them a 7-6 advantage. But again, for Southampton, the combined eight points between the two winners of now their last seven, they fell by five to Glenn, avenged that loss in their first round meeting against Glenn in the playoffs just a couple of days ago. And then the game against Windanch where they fell by three points. Alejo is at the line, a third year varsity player. More of a role player a couple of years ago as a sophomore, got more minutes as a junior. But many of these players have championship experience. As Dottie will come out, Evan Harrenberg, the senior at six foot four, who is one of the better shooters, especially for a big fella for BBP, comes out. 7-7 seven, seven. after a one for two free throw trip. Darby, three-pointer no good. They've been ice cold from beyond the perimeter. As a team that likes to shoot the three ball and feels comfortable doing it. Crossover move, Wingfield dispossessed. Here's BBP. Trying to feed Harrenberg, who just came off the bench. Wingfield, sidestep, three-pointer, Pike, no good. The rebound from Snowden. Another three-pointer. It's a Leho, and all nylon. 10-7. Just their second lead of this first quarter after failing to score in the first four and a half. Darby, the bounce pass to Walker. And they'll play catch. Stepping it into a three. Riefenstahl, no good. Wingfield, Snowden, the trailer. And the foul. Another chance at a three-point play for Micah Snowden. Snowden has the ability to knock down the jumper. We've seen him work well in the post and now running in transition. That's what he does so well. They were trying to have him become really a good stretch player. And at 6'4", and only a sophomore, there's a bright future here in Southampton. Converts the N1 opportunity. As we approach a minute remaining in the opening quarter. Darby, hard bounce pass to Walker. Try and go inside, but good D will force a turnover. Andre Franklin will come off the bench. Franklin, a senior guard at 5'11", averaging close to 15 points per game, has been their sixth man for a while, moving him up as a sophomore and relishes in that role that he has. A steal for Darby. Knocked out of bounds, will end up staying with BBP. Both teams very similar in terms of stat-wise. They hold their opponents just around 60, a little bit under, and score in the high mid-70s. Teardrop misses from Darby. Shot clock should be turned off, but there's about a half second differential. Won't matter, Snowden gets blocked underneath by Riefenstahl. Fifteen seconds to play in the opening quarter. And now trailing by three possessions despite leading most of this first eight. Five seconds. Riefenstahl to Darby. Gets hounded inside, tosses up a prayer, no good. And that ends the first quarter. 13-7 and a run late by Southampton puts them ahead. We'll be back with more on News 12 Varsity. The law.
love, yeah, it's in our souls. The passion, it's in the cheers. And in that pivotal moment, we live and die with every pass, block, steal, and game-winning dunk. And we wouldn't want it any other way. Don't miss a minute. Download the News 12 Varsity app today. A late run by the home team has given them the lead after the first quarter. Dan Savarino here with you this evening. Thanks so much for joining us on News 12 Varsity. Winner between these two will face the winner between Wyandanche and Harvestfield. We'll have that action Friday night, Suffolk A Finals from Suffolk Community College. Out of the gate for BBP. Walker, Darby, Riefenstahl, along with Harrenberg and Lawrence. And a travel by Darby. For the home team. Krasuski and Wingfield, along with Pike, Snowden, and the sixth man off the bench, Andre Franklin. Wingfield pulls out, hard bounce pass inside, almost mishandled by Krasuski, gets it back, up and under, no good. Here's Walker, straight to the cup. Baskets waved off, the foul came beforehand. But they're going to count it now. One official waved it off originally. So a three-point play coming. And Zach Walker stands at the stripe. This guy can really be a difference for this group. They've lost six games all year. And he has fouled out in every single game that they have lost. Like a second point guard on the floor. Misses the end one. But a quick putback by Dottie. The senior centerman gets his first two of the game. And it's back to a two-point game right now as Snowden will change that up immediately. A nice dime from Wingfield. Dialing up a three, coming up well short is Walker. And it'll be a blocking foul. So it'll be Andre Franklin's first. Franklin, such a big role coming off the bench. He dropped 22 points in the second meeting. Also 21 points last game. One of the two players who had 20 points or more. 30-second timeout will be called by Southampton. We'll keep it right here. When you look at Southampton's experience, Winning championship after championship in the B. Herm Lamison said it best. It's like a bag of potato chips. You can't just eat one. You always want more. And they have the experience to do so. They know what it takes to play in the big game, the big setting. When they went up last year for states, they played Marlboro. And that's about 10 minutes away from where they were playing the state tournament. Played in a pretty hostile environment. And even though they fell in that game, they still felt pretty comfortable. Many guys on the floor either having roles in those last two championships or starting last year. An inbound to the right of the basket, Timmy Aleo. Sends the rock in Avery Johnson, who just checked into the contest. The 6-3 forward, Darby on the steal, blocked from behind. What a play by Wingfield, but still. And a three-pointer from Franklin will force a timeout for BBP. Full timeout, 6.24 to play here in the half. It's 18 to 13, Southampton leading Bayport Blue Point, only on News 12 Varsity. Out 
out of the Bayport Blue Point timeout. It's 18 to 13. BBP has led most of the first quarter, yet it was Southampton who went into the break with an advantage. A travel violation by Dottie on the far side. Second travel already against the Phantoms. Wingfield, who is a soccer player as well, placing a three-year start on Israel Johnson, who's playing over at Johnson in Wales. Now first year running the point. Has been a learning curve, but has been getting it done. Three-pointer from Pike, no good. Good hustle play by Alejo into the near corner. Pike had 22 of his 25 points in the second half to propel them to that victory, a 19-point win over Glenn. Little floater, little miss. Avery Johnson kisses the glass. So his first two points of the game. But then leaves on the other side, Zach Walker, who had plenty of space to go straight to the basket. He'll end up drawing himself a foul. Zach Walker, 21 points last game. But in the two meetings, not the highest point total that he's had. Six points in that first one back at home. And then in the second meeting in the regular season, he dropped 13. For a guy that averages 14 per contest. It's such a close battle between the two in both regular season meetings. One for two. Dottie couldn't grab the extra two after the offensive rebound. Wingfield flies up the floor. Kicks it out to Pike in the far corner. Franklin dials up a three, and it connects. 23-14, largest lead of the game. A sip pass to Riefenstahl. Was still looking for his first tray. So is BBP. Walker, he'll miss high and wide left. Franklin to Alejo. Pump fakes the right elbow. Three-pointer no good from Wingfield. Catch and shoot from Riefenstahl. Hoping to get the foul. There was none. However, it will be a play on the baseline where Wingfield stepped out. And a technical. Wingfield out of frustration, slammed the basketball. And the guys wearing the stripes are going to tee him up every time there. Darby, the first of two technical free throws. And a timeout will come as well. 30-second timeout to be called by Southampton. And that's something they need to do, calm down their junior point guard. Just a mental mistake. But an eight-point game at this point. And both teams actually in their last game. It wasn't the easiest outing. At halftime, Southampton was up by six on Glenn. Meanwhile, BBP, they trailed at half by four and actually trailed going into the third quarter. But outscored Amityville 24 to 12 in that final frame, which propelled them to the victory and getting back to the semifinals, where last year they played in the semifinal game to East Hampton. They lost. Year prior to that was their championship year, the Suffolk, second Suffolk County title in their program's history. Coming back from that 12 point deficit to Harbor Fields. So Darby goes two for two on the technical free throws. And that's a big possession right there because it gets him back to trailing by just seven. Darby sees the zone. They want to extend it. It was something that Charlie Peck mentioned prior to this game 
he expected them to do. Locker keeps it in on the far side. Three-pointer rattles out from Darby. They are just ice cold from beyond the perimeter. Transition game fails as Krasuski airmails a pass looking for Snowden. 4-0-7 to play here in the second. In a contest that started off pretty cold, it was only 2-0 through the first half of the opening quarter. Neither team really could hit water. Catch and shoot, back iron, pops high in the air and eventually into the hands of Alejo. The senior to Krasuski, another senior, who hands off to Pike. Loses the handle on the ball, gains it back, and now Franklin on the far wing. Andre Franklin. It's Krasuski. Krasuski, left elbow jumper, nothing but net. Leads back up to nine. And again, that is the largest lead of the game once again. Three-pointer rattles out, Reepenstahl. Franklin. Crosses half court, goes straight to the basket. They're going to say he's fouled on the floor. So Darby on the hand check foul. And that will be the fifth team foul of this half. So Charlie Beck's going to call a timeout for BBP. It'll be a full timeout with a nine point deficit for the Phantoms, who overall on the season, 14 and six. Losses at Glen early on in the year. Pat Med, that was a close loss by just a point. They fell to Santa Mariches by nine. They fell to Southampton twice, as we alluded to before. And Wyndanch, a four point loss, which was avenged back in the final game of the regular season. And for that group, Some of their close losses, again, that, that's a learning curve. That's a, a learning experience. Gets them to the next level. And they will have nothing more than be able to play in a championship game one more time. They know how to play in clutch moments, and we saw that in the game against Amityville. Darby hit two free throws, about 20 seconds left to pull ahead, and then Lawrence hit both free throws with 11 seconds remaining to get him to double figures and seal off that three-point victory against a team that has two really good guards in Sterling and Soriano. And now they get to see Southampton. Offensive rebound and opening up the bank is Krasuski after the Alejo miss. Pierce Prendergast just checked into the game. The freshman who was called up for the last four games of the year. They feel he can Provide some strong defense of stopping Pike. Another three-pointer, Prendergast will miss. Coast to coast, stops and pops from 14, no good from Pike. Crossover. And Walker will try to finish, but draw a foul. This team doesn't go to the bench too often. BBP didn't once during their last game. Already we have seen them go to the bench a couple of times. And another free throw miss for Zach Walker. Free throws have not been really good for anybody today in the opening half. Walker 0 for 2 at the stripe. But a fresh 35. Three-pointer for Walker. And an air ball kept in at the baseline by his teammate and Donnie will go into the palms of Franklin. Krasuski, no good. Fighting for that loose ball was Alejo. Two on one, and they try a little tapper. Eventually it goes home. Long pass, and Snowden. Almost like receiving a touchdown. And Riefenstahl stepped right on the sideline. 
So another empty-handed possession in this quarter. Here's a tray, and Alejo nails the triple. Lead is up to 14. They press Walker. But an offensive foul drawn by Alejo. Pike with another bullet to Alejo. Couldn't hit back-to-back -back threes. It's a 14-point lead with 95 seconds to play here in the first half. Dottie inside will come up short. He was asking for a call, won't get it. Another long pass looking for Snowden, and it will be a foul against Micah. Walker trying to pick off that pass. So both teams now on the bonus. The final 127. And the officials will come together again. I wonder if we'll overturn this call. It will just be for the position of the inbound pass. The BBP fans made their way out. Southampton can still feel the energy in the building. It was expected to be as packed as possible. Franklin on the strip, straight to the cup, and the finish. It's a 1-2-2 two, two trap. It has worked a couple of times. Riefenstahl cannot hit the three-pointer. Krzyzewski tries to draw contact, will just stop at the right block instead and put it in. An 18-point lead. Bounce pass nearly intercepted again. Walker, Riefenstahl, and finally hits a three-pointer. He is their three-point shooter. Sometimes it takes just one to get going again. Looking for a response, no good from Krzyzewski. Shot clock is turned off. Rendergast, the young rookie, gets some space. Riefenstahl again will come up short. Five seconds to go. Long pass, Franklin to the rack and the finish. And that will end the first half with an exclamation point. What a finish here by Southampton as they head over to the locker room. It's 38 to 21 at halftime. Suffolk County, a semifinal, only on News 12 Varsity. Who will rise higher? Dunk harder farther. The playoffs are here. Tune to News 12 Varsity all postseason long. Welcome back to News 12 Varsity. Dan Savarino here with you. Thanks so much for joining us from Southampton, Long Island, New York. It is a 17 point lead at halftime. As the Mariners are ahead over Bayport Blue Point. The team that defeated twice during the regular season. More importantly, a chance to get back to the finals for the fourth consecutive year. Where again, they actually won the last three B championships. Winner is going to play Wine Dance as that game has gone final. They defeated top seeded Harbersfield. And what a big win for them after coming off a really strong outing in the game prior to that. Where Kashawn Charles, who was probably their top player, had 11 straight points in the third quarter to propel them past Sayville in that 4-5 game. Well, now they're going to play for a Suffolk County Championship, something they haven't done in a while. 
So the reigning champs in Harborsville, they are out. And we begin play here with a fresh eight minutes on the clock. From left to right, it will be Southampton wearing the white uniforms. They'll go with their starting lineup of Wingfield, Pike, Alejo, Krasuski, and Snowden. On the other side, the same starters for BBP wear the blue uniforms, tops and bottoms. Darby, Riefenstahl, Walker, Lawrence, and Dottie. Here's Darby. Good pass inside, off glass and in. Ryan Lawrence. Southampton did such a really good job of clogging up that middle where they've been able to contain Darby, a guy who dropped 51 points this year against Mount Sinai, had another 44 earlier on against Pat Med. Five times this year he's been at least 30 points or more. And so far, solid defense has began this third frame. Avery Johnson's going to come off the bench for Southampton. He'll replace Snowden. Johnson already has two points. Darby can really take over a game. Kicks over to the near wing, and Riefenstahl misses on another triple attempt. He's hit just one in the first half. Their main three-point th threat. Krasuski, Johnson, turn around, and the foul. And Dottie saying, where was it? So two shots upcoming for one of the eight seniors on this roster who is the backup big man. Forte generally on the gridiron playing football, but a pretty good rebounder. He can finish right around the rim, and he'll miss on the first. Had two points last game. Did not score in either of the first two meetings with BBP. And we'll have an official's timeout. Just 58 seconds in. We'll step out momentarily on News 12 Varsity. After a brief official's delay, we resume play. Just 58 seconds into the third quarter. They'll play with just two guys wearing the stripes from here on out. Seem to be some illness to the other officials. We, of course, wish our best and hope he returns to the floor at some point. Here's Darby dialing up a long three, but will miss from way downtown. Chad Pike looking inside to Johnson. And another turnover. They've turned over the basketball three of the four possessions to begin this third quarter. Remember, starts weren't the prettiest. It was a very poor start for Southampton. Turnovers and missing field goals. But for them, they didn't trail by that much because it was the same thing for BBP. Catch and shoot and nothing but nylon. Riefenstahl, one more time. It's back to a 12-point contest. The lead, it was 17 at half. But a response on the three. It's Chad Pike. The team's leading scorer, 15 points per contest. Darby. What an acrobatic finish. Just sat right on the rim and fell. Pike, and he hits a three-pointer. Timeout BBP, and this has really opened up. Well, Chad Pike, who was part of a Long Island Championship soccer team, him, Alejo, Wingfields, more of that jump shooter has displayed he can take it off the dribble. But he just knocked down two threes after a pass. A guy who has dropped 53 three-point field goals made entering into today. And he already has two here in the third quarter alone. It's a 44-28 lead. So following the Bayport Blue Point timeout. Darby, hard pass. 
Walker back to Darby. Yo-yo's the ball, the top of the key, and again, they clog up that middle so well, taking away his chance to go straight to the basket. Instead, he'll dish it out, and Walker will miss on another three-pointer. Offensive rebound, and a blocking foul will come. Walker has had his chances at the stripe today. And this foul is going to go against Snowden. Team's first here in the half. Zach Walker is pretty much the second point guard on this team. So Snowden will sit for the second time here in the quarter. It'll be subbed in for Avery Johnson, the six foot three forward. A two for two trip and a much needed one at this point of the game. It's back to a 14 point advantage for the home team. Crossover move, good dish inside off glass. Avery Johnson from the left block. What a dime by Wingfield. A skip pass to Brender Gatz, the freshman. Darby and he airmails a pass going inside. This is the one team that Coach Peck feels have been able to at least contain Darby. And when you say contain, that means 24 points in the first meeting, 15 in the second. Pike thought about the three. Instead, Wingfield will take it from the wing. The sharpshooters are out here in quarter number three. It's a 20. Well, check that, a 19-point lead. And Darby with a quick response. He's hit 63 triples on the season. That's only his second. Going straight to the basket and finishing is Krasowski. A multi-sport athlete, pretty good pitcher on the baseball team as well. Walker against Krasowski. And a foul will come against number 12. Prendergast will sit and reap and stall back out on the floor for the visitors. Mid-block jumper, nothing but net. Ryan Lawrence. He's got some signs at six foot four. Krasuski. And that will be a travel. What a second travel of the game against Southampton. Well, no matter what, in the finals, wh whichever team ends up going and finishing this game with a win, they will play a team that they lost to once this year. In one of the two losses for Southampton, we mentioned it before, it was a three-point defeat that Windanch beat them. For BBP, they fell to Windanch and lost by just four. So no matter what, the team that they play in the finals, it's going to be close. And the Phantoms saw them just about a week ago, last Monday. 32nd time that was called by Southampton. As they have led since late in the first quarter. A group that has had in the past such a storied, storied success. And you can see all the banners throughout this gym, and there are tons of them. But their teams in the late 60s, they have one of the longest win streaks in Suffolk County history. 61 games they are able to win, which no school, public, private, has surpassed. And it's one of those records that you don't know if it'll ever be broken, kind of like a Joe DiMaggio 51, just because the, the length and the teams that you see, the parity in the league, it's not an easy one. Go for a mid-block jumper again was Ryan Lawrence. Yet Lawrence would have missed on this one. Here's a three-pointer, Krasuski, front iron, back iron, into the hands of BBP. Lawrence with the board. Darby across midcourt. Riefenstahl, good ball movement, short quarter jumper, is an air ball, good follow-up by Lawrence, but he'll miss. 
Under three and a half to play in the third. Franklin down the left side of the lane, too strong. Rebounded by Dottie, just keeps it in at the baseline. Darby stops and pops, long three, nothing but net. Well, he's a guy who can take over a game. And you also have to respect his shot. Because he has taken him from way downtown. Johnson finishes at the right block. Darby into the near corner. Three-pointer, Riefenstahl drains the three. It's now a 12-point game with two and a half to play in the third. Those three start to fall. We have ourselves a ball game. Pike on the crossover move. Good pass inside to Johnson, who draws the contact. Kevin Dottie, the senior, does not agree with the call. It will go against him. And Evan Harrenberg, another senior, will have to come off the bench to replace him. So the two top centermen for each team will be on the bench momentarily. Johnson hits that first free throw. Harrenberg comes in, a kid who played as a, a sophomore, has always really been injury pro, and they've been resting in the last couple of weeks, playing with two bad ankles. He broke his nose, missed another few weeks. And now will have a good matchup. Two for two with the stripe is Johnson. Back to a 13-point lead. Darby, wide open. Riefenstahl for three. Front iron. Rebounded by Johnson. That's his forte. Franklin got blocked. Gets the ball back. Drives baseline. Up and under move. No good. And Darby will control the rock on the far side of the court. 145 left in here in the third. Riefenstahl nicks right off the front iron and then off the hands of Harrenberg. Southampton basketball. Wing to wing. Pike takes the screen, drives straight to the basket, no good. Riefenstahl with the rebound. Airs it out. Here's Walker. He'll finish. 12-point game. Franklin, they work the ball around the perimeter. Pike was the main guy they were worried about. Here's a baseline J, which hits. And Krasuski looks up to the student section for the visitors. Ball hit the top of the shot clock, so we'll inbound. And slowly walking up the court will be Wingfield. The junior point guard goes to his right and hands off to Krasuski, the other ball handler. Andre Franklin to Krasuski. 16-footer comes up short. About a second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Darby surveys the court, trailing by 14. Remember, they trailed by nine going into the fourth against Amityville in the first round. To the foul line, Riefenstahl with five seconds. Three pointer, here's Walker. No good. And the half-court attempt would have counted from Pike. But that ends three quarters of basketball. It's a comfortable lead. 14 points, but not comfortable enough. Southampton is eight minutes away from returning to a championship game. BVP have enough in him to come back. We'll find out next on News 12 Varsity. The love. 
Yeah, it's in our souls. The passion, it's in the cheers. And in that pivotal moment, we live and die with every pass, block, steal, and game-winning dunk. And we wouldn't want it any other way. Don't miss a minute. Download the News 12 Varsity app today. The lead at halftime was 17 for Southampton. Now it is 14 as we begin the fourth quarter. Line Dance has already punched their ticket to the Suffolk County Class A Championship game Friday night, which will be played at Suffolk Community College, Selden. And if you can't make it, you can watch it live on News 12 Varsity. Out of the gate, Walker will come up short. We'll reset the lineup for you. Darby nearly steals the ball away. A bullet pass over to Franklin. So Franklin Krasuski are two in the backcourt, along with Johnson, Pike, and Wingfield. And Darby misses a pass that was intended for Dottie. Darby Walker, Lawrence, Dottie, and Riefenstahl. And Coach Beck has seen enough as Pike finishes for the first two points here of the fourth. Well, if you're just joining us, the only lead BBP had was very early. They were up 2-0 for a good amount of time. Then they were up back and forth. We went up by two possessions, three if most. But otherwise, Southampton kind of just took over. And Chad Pike in the second half alone with eight points, their leading scorer. You know he's a second-half guy. Multi-sport athlete who has really stepped up here, including hitting some big... Three-pointers to begin the third frame. Southampton knows that Darby is maybe the best player in the conference. Not one of the best guys that they've seen all year. And they have been able to disrupt his flow. The only time that Darby has been able to beat them has been from NBA range three-pointers. Otherwise, they're clogging the middle. And the Phantoms have just been out of sync offensively. Darby, behind the back. Scoop shot, takes a couple of bounces and finish. Such a competitor. Remember, he was playing more than 20 minutes a night on that last championship team, one of the two Suffolk County titles BBP has ever won in basketball. A miss and then a foul against Southampton. It will go against Avery Johnson. Team's fourth. They let Darby roll the ball up all the way past midcourt. Straight to the basket, but an offensive foul. With a good finish. He disagrees with the call. A 2-1-2 trap. Franklin breaks it. He floats a pass to Wingfield. Elijah to Chad Pike. Hard bounce pass one more time. Hounded by Zach Walker. Get some space away from him. With now 10 seconds on the timer. Throwing up a prayer was Pike. No good. Reapenstahl the rebound. Airmails a pass. Gets it into the hands of Darby who was able to finish. It's back to a 12-point game. Franklin, three-pointer. Here's Pike. And hits the triple. Showing a three and putting him straight to the head. A response from Riefenstahl. Offensive rebound from BBP. So Ryan Lawrence will head to the free throw line. They have been at the stripe Good amount of times today. Percentage not that high though. Yeah. 
Lawrence will miss the first. Snowden and Krasuski. Will return to the floor. Snowden again came out early on in that third quarter. Avery Johnson got more of the minutes in the third frame. Krasuski gives him a second ball handler on top of having some size. Wingfield cross midcourt. Here's a three-pointer from Pike. Too strong. Darby goes off to the races. Bounce pass straight to the rack. The follow-up by Darby. He's been getting it done here in the fourth quarter. He said every field goal for them so far here in the fourth. And now it's 20 points. But a quick response by Alejo extends their lead. Now 64-49. Darby on the miss. Krasuski drops it over to Pike. A three-pointer. Front iron, then the backboard. Another chance for Snowden. Third effort goes. Krasuski extends the lead. Approaching five minutes in this game. Riefenstahl. Too strong on the three. And it just has not been his night from downtown. They up the pressure. Pike will move to the middle of the court. Who's the handle, continues to yo-yo the ball, and will drop it to the far wing as Elijah Wingfield will be fouled on the floor. Foul goes against Zach Walker. That is the team's fifth. So both have five fouls. Timeout situation, you see it on the bottom of your screen. BVP down to just one. Snowden, and that should be goaltending. That will be the call. So Dottie blocking the ball away from Snowden, but the basket again will count. Lead is up to 19, and a timeout will be called. By Southampton. It'll be a full timeout. We'll step out momentarily. 66-49, 4.38 to go here in the fourth. Stay tuned for more on News 12 Varsity. A 19-point lead for the home team, Southampton. The Mariners leading the Phantoms of Bayport Blue Point here in the Suffolk A semifinal. Winner plays Windanch. Out of the timeout, a short corner jumper is nothing but net for Kevin Dottie. Krasuski will travel the basketball. So a little bit of life here from BBP. Who are still in this game, they're used to trailing. They're comfortable in these spots. As of right now, Darby has 20 points, nearly a backcourt violation. Just keeping it in, towing that line was Lawrence. Darby for three, too long. Dottie hustling after to lose ball, I won't get to it though. Southampton will have the rock and the possession. Krasuski will inbound, 12 points so far in the game, just like the number on his chest. Hands it over to the point guard in Wingfield. We'll float it back to Krasuski. Their two best ball handlers. No look pass inside Snowden. A thing of beauty. And an empty handed possession. Turnovers have really plagued both of these teams. They have one second to get across the timeline, they do. Krasuski. Here's Pike. Dialing up a three straight away. Will be a miss for Wingfield. Pike gets the ball back for a fresh 35. Fires a bullet inside to Snowden. He misses, and an over the back will be coming. Pike 11 points here in half number two. Most of them coming from the three ball. It's a 19 point lead for Southampton. Who despite starting very slow in that first frame have really just exploded. 
Darby will draw the contact and the foul. 20 points for number 33. Foul will go against Snowden. That will be the seventh against the Mariners. So in the bonus from here on out. And shooting free throws will be BBP. Darby's brother, Tim, had 104 average when he was in school, two years older, and playing with him on the championship. Could have played in college, elected to focus on his academics. Meanwhile, Darby, who is also a very bright individual, more towards the mid-90s, he will look to play in college. Again, does have those looks from many different schools. Goes one for two at the line. It's back to an 18-point deficit for BBP. Stepping into a three, no good. That was a Leo. Darby kicks out, Rapenstahl. Another miss for the triple. Darby with the steal and tries to throw a pass in. Well, he's looking for Dottie. I'm going to say he actually touched the baseline when it went into the hands of one of the Phantoms, or checked that, excuse me, for one of the Mariners. So BBP with the possession here after a good hustle play. Darby pulls back for a three. Misses. Offensive board. Another miss from Dottie. Rebounded by Alejo. Had the jersey tug. They got it out to Snowden, who stretches the floor. It's a 20-point game. Well, he's going to continue to grow. And he will help this group for many, many years. Just the size he brings. Such a long player. Another offensive foul against Bayport. Harrenberg for Dottie after the team's sixth foul. Well, it seems the foul is going to go against Darby. And it looks like he did foul out of this game. And if that's the case, the last time he'll step on the floor in high school, what a storied career for the senior. He's won a title, only continue to do it in college. And the top scorer is in Suffolk County. For now in Southampton, it's about killing off this clock. Last year to beat Babylon in the Suffolk B Championship. That actually lost to Harpersfield in the small school championship, which again always occurs right after, before getting ready for states and before Long Island. A team that has that championship experience, many of these guys going from role players to being key players. Krasuski is one of them. Wingfield, this is his first year as the starting point guard and has done a fine job working very, very hard. It was a tough schedule for them. They always used to test themselves in the non-league. You add on to the League 6 and what it was all across Suffolk. They have done a really fine job this season. Just two losses, earning the number two seed to play on their home court here in this game. And technically, they'll actually be the higher seed when they face Wyandanche and just a couple of days. Raven Stahl will come out, get the applause from the Bayport Blue Point fans. Eddie Arnold, another senior, will come in as Chad Pike's day is done. Nice ovations all around. Here's a three-pointer from Venero, a senior who misses. Because Sean Charles is definitely the top guy for Wyandanche. He's their leading scorer. He's really their bread and butter. But if Southampton plays a, the game that they have played this evening, and plays a game that they have played many times, 
they are going to be just fine. But again, it's a different team. BBP is more of a finesse team. The physicality that Wine Edge brings to the table, that is what really stands out. But almost every guy who steps on the floor for the Mariners, you know they can be the leading scorer at the end of the night. And even when we're watching it this evening, scoring is very, very spread out. Final game they'll play in the gym in 2016-17 season. And for the seeing is the final time they will come out of this specific locker room. And they'll hope to add another banner to this building as well. Rendergast steals the ball away. Another player with such a bright future. He got fouled. He'll head to the free throw line since they are in the bonus. And Prendergast has that length. About 6'3". He's had a really good season down in JV. Now some varsity experience and varsity playoff experience as well. <laughs> Lawrence, a junior who will be back next year. We'll get an ovation. Sam Pikos, the senior, comes in. Chucks it up, and he'll head to the free throw line. Peter Drago will also be coming in after the next free throw. With under a minute to play. If you're wondering how the other semifinal game went today, of course, you can watch the full game replay of this game and that one, only on channel 614, news12varsity.com, and the News 12 Varsity app. Check out their win over the top seed, Harbor Fields, who, again, were the reigning champions in Suffolk A. Pike goes one for two from the free throw line. A 19 point game. As many make their way towards the ex exits. Make sure you stay tuned with us after the game. We'll talk to one of the victorious Southampton players. As they'll be reaching a championship game another year. Only one state title in their time. That was in 1999. Prendergast with the N1 opportunity now. They've won Long Island 10 times. They've won 18 Suffolk titles in all the different years. Just a storied program that goes back decades upon decades. Lamison was a member of that team. An alumnus of this school as well. Here's a three. Missed wide. Shot clock will be turned off. And then Southampton can celebrate a semifinal win and return to a Suffolk final. That's going to do it. Wasn't the prettiest start. But you take away the first three, four minutes of the game. Southampton dominated Bayport Blue Point. Third time this season they defeated BBP. But this one means the most as they will return to a Suffolk County Championship game. They'll play Wine Dance Friday night. Except this time they'll end up being in the Suffolk A after winning the B title last three years. Stay tuned. We'll talk with one of the victorious Southampton Mariners. Just a couple of moments only on News 12 Varsity. Who will rise higher? Dunk harder. And go farther. The playoffs are here. Tune to News 12 Varsity all postseason long.
Welcome back to New Swole Varsity Southampton. Heading back to a championship game. Their win today over BBP. We're joined by Chad Pike. And Chad is a senior for this team. Uh, last couple of years, you've won championships in the B. Now you're playing in the A this year. Tough schedule. Still come out just two losses all year. Yeah. And back to another championship game. Uh, how does this feel? It's awesome. I mean, we've worked the whole year for this. And playing, moving up, was we knew it was going to be tough, but all the games have been competitive, like way more fun season, and we just got, got to get one more. When you look at the start of this game, it was a cold start, some turnovers, some misses. What do you think things turned around back in that first quarter? I think once we settled down, the crowd, I think our adrenaline was pumping, got, got us rattled a little bit. But once we got into our motion, like, I think we uh, felt pretty good. One thing that really stood out was the defensive game plan and really shutting down Mike Darby. Yes, he still had more than 20 points today, but to shut down him and clog up that middle, what worked? Uh, we played a nice little defense that we've been working on. During the middle of the season, we got a little stagnant with our defense. In the last like, probably eight games, we really turned it on. Everyone's buying into the defense, and we're playing well. You mentioned the last eight games, all of them being wins, and now you move on to a championship game. How does that feel just to get back to this point once again and know that you can finish off your senior year with another title? It's, it's crazy. Every season I've been on varsity, we've made it this far, and we've always won. So I want, I want to keep it going. I don't want to lose. I think everyone else on my team has the same feelings. We just got to get one more get one more done. Well, we'll be wine dancing now as they actually won today against Harpers Field. You've seen them twice. You know what you got from them. One win, one loss. What do you remember the most? Oh. Uh, we really got to shut down Kayshawn, and they uh, they attacked the basket off rebounds a lot. So, but we uh, we didn't play them well with our defense last time. But I think I think we can get it done. Well, we'll see if they can get it done Friday night, and you can watch it live here on News 12 Varsity after a semifinal win over BBP in Southampton, who returned to a championship game. He's Chad Pike. I'm Dan Savarino. A big win for Southampton. Back to the Suffolk A championship game. We'll catch you next time. The love, yeah, it's in our souls. The passion, it's in the cheers. And in that pivotal moment, we live and die with every pass, block, steal, and game-winning dunk. And we wouldn't want it any other way. Don't miss a minute. Download the News 12 Varsity app today.